Free Christ coming to you from my new studio on wheels. I was afraid this was going to be the last video if I did another video at all because it was made known to me that it's not helping. The main objective, which is for me to further develop my relationship with God and for you to do the same. And the way you do that is by going within, not to a church and not to a YouTube channel or not to a book. And that every minute spent listening to me is a minute not spent listening to the Holy Spirit that comes from within you, that still small voice within. And so, it became very clear to me that that's just a self-evident truth. And I was afraid, afraid, but I was a little bit heavy-hearted, over the idea that I wasn't going to be making any more videos. Because this has become kind of, uh, I've become kind of fond of the rapport I've developed in the comments section, watching your videos and you watching my videos. And I was a little bit heavy-hearted over it because you guys have kind of been my friends during a time when I didn't have any friends or family or support group. And a very turbulent time in my life. But it became clear to me that no more plasma fire videos. So I've been negotiating with God. I'm trying to find a caveat and an uh, exception to the rule in order to continue making these videos, which has kind of become a bit of, a, I don't know, a habit or just a tradition or just a, a pastime. And that might be part of the problem is we don't have a lot of time to spend passing time on something that's just becomes routine. And the plasma fire videos have become alarm bells that it's no longer necessary or appropriate to continue ringing that alarm. There's two kinds of alarms we're familiar with. Uh, wake up and go to work alarm, alarm clock, or a fire alarm. And as far as the wake up alarm, it's only appropriate to ring the alarm so long, so many times, and then you realize the people aren't going to wake up. You wake up one morning, and everyone's alarm clock's going off, and you're walking around everyone's room, your mom and dad's room, and shaking them, wake up. Your brother's room, shaking them, wake up. Your sister's room, shaking them, wake up. By the end of the day, or three days later, or a year and a half in this case, still shaking them, trying to wake them up. They're not going to wake up. They're dead. Now, again... Analogies and metaphors are not perfect and exact, but this is the understanding I came to. The other alarm is a fire alarm. And if they're so far up in the burning building that they're not going to make it out, they're not going to make it down all those flights of stairs before the whole thing catches fire, it's just too late. You might as well just let them sleep, remain blissfully unaware of what's coming for them. So as for the plasma fire videos, I don't think I'll be able to find a caveat or an exception to that rule. I don't think there's any more plasma fire videos coming from me. But, speaking as Jeffrey Christ, <laughs> I may permit myself to continue doing some of these videos that discusses the development and further engaging in a greater depth of that relationship with the Holy Spirit. That still small voice within that I have and that you have that speaks to me and that probably speaks to you too, whether or not you know it. It's your conscience. It's your little Jiminy Cricket. The Mormons refer to it as the light of Christ. Your conscience, that knowing between right and wrong that you had from the time you were born. And most people have it slowly whittled away throughout the course of their life. And by the end, it's all moral relativism. And they say, well, you know what I mean? Anyway, getting off the track. But I'm going to relay a few things that came to me through this new development of this perception I have of that voice. Call it ESP, extra sensitive perception, if you will. Call it channeling a spirit the Holy Spirit, 
infinite intelligence, whatever it is. <laughs> I've developed this relationship and this rapport, this dialogue, this conversational ability to maintain conversation and listen to that voice and receive streaming thought that comes in so clear and crisp and uninterrupted that even if I was imagining and making stuff up, I can't make it up that quick. It comes in so fluid and so fluent, like a language that I'm not fluent in. And one of the things, some of the most recent concepts that came to me through that process is good reptilians and bad reptilians. And that's that alone is a concept most people cannot wrap their mind around. Everything's binary. Either they're good or bad, which is it? They can't be both good and bad. And it takes you about a half a second to think about it and go, wait a minute, if they're anything like humans, there's both good and bad humans. That will be essential. That's why it is essential to develop this relationship and this rapport through that inner dialogue with the still small voice within that is the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. the Christ. That's the channel that you tune your frequency to to receive the wisdom of God through that still small voice within, and that channel is the Christ channel. Tune your dial. That's all Christ means. And anyone who can receive the Holy Spirit and that knowledge from God through that channel is therefore of Christ. Most people don't want to take the responsibility of calling themselves Jane Christ or Joe Christ, and they find it to be blasphemy because everything they've been taught is wrong. Remember, those who control this world and the churches and the educational institutions and every other institution are the ones who killed that guy who could channel the Spirit of God so well and so he, he was influential to those around him because it became so apparent and he made such an impression on the people around him that those in positions of power found it to be a threat to their power their power base. And so they had him killed. Those are the people that wrote your books, education and uh, church and otherwise. Those are the people that run the economy. The powers that be maintained their power by killing him because he was a threat that would undermine their power and get people to disregard the government. Not give to Caesar and render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Because this guy is presenting a perspective of reality in such a way that people aren't going to find it very important to pay their taxes. Or to mind the laws written by the king and enforced by all the king's men. When this guy, king of kings, is showing us a whole new world and he is so believable and he makes such an impression on people that they're, gonna, they're not going to pay attention to us anymore. We need to get away, do away with that guy in order that they still pay attention to us and mind our rules and obey our laws. And they did that. And that's who wrote the rules and the laws and gave everyone that has a concept today of Christianity their concept of Christianity. And it's been usurped. It's been co-opted by the very force that killed the guy who could channel God because they didn't want other people channeling God. And they now... Instead of getting rid of that guy and trying to erase his memory from the minds of men and women on the planet, they co-opted his memory. They put the mask on themselves and said, we now carry on the work of Christ and we uh, transmit the message of Christ. The very ones who had him killed. Remember that when I say things that are so contrary to the standard traditional Christian concepts that you go, oh, that's blasphemy. Blasphemy according to the paradigm that was written by the people that killed Christ. It makes perfect sense to me, and maybe I'm beating a dead horse here, but I will come back to that point later when I hit on one of these things that I know will trigger your indoctrinated programming that says, I can't be Jeffrey Christ, that's blasphemy. There was only one Son of God, His only begotten Son, and that was Jesus. But they have a double think that says we're all children of God. Anyway, I will come back to that.
because Satan was the serpent in the garden and Jesus was his brother, don't be surprised if they don't look that different. I will include a link in the description by Hillsdale College where it starts out by saying the funny thing about the serpent is, how did he talk? And why was he cursed to crawl and slither on his belly for the rest of his life when that's what they do? The answer is, he used to be an upright, erect, walking being before he was cursed to slither on his belly the rest of his days. And, from my best understanding, I'm going to just start to weave together a tale here and admit that I don't know the difference between where the line is drawn between revelation that I've received, my interpretation of that revelation, or my opinion about that revelation, and or my extrapolation and imagination adding to. But let's just say, Planet X, Nibiru, the planet of the Anunnaki, went out, and now it's come back, and it's here. Along with it came the Anunnaki, and the new heaven, and the new earth, and the new Jerusalem. Before they left, Enki and Enlil, Enki got pissed off at Enlil for giving us the bite of the apple. The serpent in the garden, Enlil, gave humanity the bite of the apple, our neocortex. You have the R-complex, which is our reptilian brain, that's not, I'm not talking out of class on that. It's real, it's true, that's what they call it. It's the very central, oldest, most ancient, primitive part of the brain at the very core. The R complex, the reptilian brain, in us. On top of that is the mammalian brain that evolved much more recent in our evolutionary process if you were to believe in evolution. And on top of that is the neocortex, that which makes us thinking human beings differentiated from apes. Apes have the mammalian brain also. They don't have the neocortex, which gave us the ability to use tools and weapons, create them, and know how to use them. Enki and Enlil, the two brothers of the Anunnaki, a.k.a. Jesus and Satan, Enlil was the serpent in the upper management office who tread us like cattle. Enki was the serpent in the garden who interacted with the people on a regular basis, maybe even had a little more empathy for them, and was the one that slipped them the bite of the apple. And for doing so, he was cursed to slither on his belly the rest of his days. And when Enki and Enlil took off, they left it to their son Marduk. M-A-R-D-U-K. I'll put links in the description for educational purposes for anyone who wants to follow and understand this storyline I'm weaving together. Enki and Enlil took off, but they knew they'd be back. And they left Marduk, who ruled and reigned over the earth for quite a while, and then he had sons, the sons of Marduk, the sons of God. And as far as you and I are concerned, it really don't make it much of a difference whether it's a son of God or God himself. As we are in the line of eternal progression, as man is, God once was, and as God is, man may become. Enki and Enlil took off and left it to Marduk. Marduk had sons, and he may be chilling on the moon, or right here on earth, or underground. It really doesn't make much difference in the storyline that I'm weaving together. The sons of Marduk definitely had an empire and influence over culture for quite a while. But in our day and age, the devil's greatest trick was convincing the world he didn't exist. And that's why the things I'm telling you now sound so out there and bizarre. And there will come a time, now, upon the return of the Anunnaki, where he who convinced the world he doesn't exist will pop up and start laying waste and creating havoc. You've heard that thing. He's causing a lot of mayhem because he knows his time is short. But another good strategy would be to wait till the Anunnaki themselves, the rest of them, Enki and Enlil, when, when they get back, Marduk knows he, he, he fucked up. He didn't do his job and he knows he's in trouble.
And so he's going to wait until the general population sees the saviors that have returned and expected us to have a consciousness far greater develop in a state of far greater development than it is right now because he enslaved us and entrapped us in our evolutionary stupidity we should be much further along than we are right now because Enki and Enlil had a plan and it wasn't to create the totalitarian material based world that Marduk decided he was going to make out of this place And so he may just wait until we see them, the saviors, to cause his mayhem. Because we don't see the difference between good reptilians and bad reptilians. We just see them all as reptilians. And so he waits until we see them. And then he starts running around creating mayhem and carnage. And we associate the mayhem and carnage that he creates with their presence. And their existence. And see no difference between these two beings. But think of this, just like human beings, there are good, there are bad, and there are those that don't care. Just like, let's say, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the war on terror. From the upper level management of generals, the brass, and the president, down to the lowest level of foot soldier who actually arrives, boots on the ground, there are good and there are bad. There are troops that went over to Afghanistan and Iraq... And just wanted to kill some muzzies, some hajis. And did nothing but brutalize and terrorize those people. There were troops on the ground that went over to Iraq and Afghanistan. Whose heart went out to those people. And did what they could to try to make a good impression on them. And let the, the people of Iraq and Afghanistan know that we are not the terrorists that we may seem to be to you. And remember that whole thing was all about winning the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people. And then afterwards, people like Bill Maher made some jokes saying, Well, we learned that the way to the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people is not through their electrified genitals. But who knew? We had to try, right? Now we know. We learned. And the photos that we saw coming out of Abu Ghraib where they're all stacked in pyramids naked with hoods over their heads. But we didn't do that to prisoners of war. We did that to detainees. And at the same time, we got rid of the word suspect because there was a required level of evidence. And you must declare what it is they are suspected of. And a certain lower level of evidence that you have to base that suspicion on in order to arrest them. So we don't arrest and just round people up and disappear suspects. Those are now person of interests. Words don't matter. You'll know them by their fruit. Labels and words are the form. The actual deed is the function. And unless and until you develop a relationship with the gods and are able to differentiate and distinguish between the good ones and the bad ones and judge them by their fruit, you will see them all in the same form and have no differentiation between their function and not know that these are the saviors and this is the devil and Jesus and Satan were both serpents one was the serpent in the garden if they're both brothers what does that make the other one? and if they're both God's children and so are we what does that make us? refer again to the R complex at the center of your brain And so just like the war in Afghanistan and Iraq, there may have been upper level generals that went in there for the opium, the poppy fields. Uh, what did we do right when we got there? Raided the museum for all the ancient artifacts. What else did we do? Uh, no blood for oil. No blood for oil. There may be some who went over for the oil and the poppy fields and the ancient artifacts and to exploit the people and any other resources they could find on the planet. Meanwhile, we're sitting here talking about, oh, we got to win the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people. The hearts and minds are how we will win the war on terror. So on this consciousness farm that we are on, you can choose to be a farm animal or a house pet. Farm animal, house pet, and lab rat are three different functions, all pretty much under the same scenario, situation. Ownership over the animal.
is common to each one of those three scenarios. House pet, farm animal, or lab rat for experimentation. They just serve a different purpose. <clears throat> but we can look at a house cat and say, man, that cat's lucky. Or the house dog. And say, I wish I had their life. Uh, they don't have anything to worry about. We provide everything for them. And the only thing we want is companionship. To develop a relationship with an animal that doesn't have the language skills that we do. Oftentimes the relationship we develop with them is even closer of a bond than that which we can form with other humans. Because other humans have those ulterior motives. Anyway, your house pet can be a deeper relationship than some people can form with other people. The farm animal is not there to develop a relationship of companionship, but there is a resource. And the lab rat is there to provide experimentational information. We serve all three purposes. It's just a matter of which one you personally will fall into, which category. Developing a relationship with Christ through the Holy Spirit by developing that rapport and that conversation that you can only get by going inward is how you will be able to identify them and how they will be able to identify you as one who wants to be a house pet. I'll include a link to the music video, We'll Make Great Pets. We'll Make Great Pets. Either way, submission, acknowledgement, recognition of the fact that we're not the top dog, that we are in a petri dish, and there is a great scientist in the sky whose ultimate resource that he wants is the consciousness and the friendship and the companionship of those who will come willingly. Free will. That was the plan of Jesus. They will all serve you, but I will take away their free will was the plan of Satan. Something much more like a farm animal. Choosing to understand and free yourself from all the indoctrination that you've been jam-packed full of that is programmed to get you to reject God upon the return and the, uh, return and the arrival of God by the one that stayed here and turned us all against God and enslaved our consciousness and kept us in a lower level of consciousness in order to serve his own purposes. Relinquishing all that programming and propaganda and indoctrination will be required in order to accept that God is God and you're just a human. And it's not going to be a guy riding a cloud that looks like Jesus. But if you can accept that, there may be different forms that God takes, whether it's the alien greys, the tall white Nordics, the blue Arcturians, the reptilians, the mantis beings. Those are forms. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of conscience or no, consci or no kingdom at all is the key line to a movie called The Kingdom of Heaven. That kingdom of conscience has beings that take all forms, who've been extracted from the Petri dish as the Anunnaki say, okay, Marduk, you're going you're, you're to raise these humans up. By the time we get back, they're going to be consciously evolved spiritual beings that are ready to come with God. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that, yeah. Yeah, I'll see you when you get back. And by the time they got back, Marduk had actually enslaved us, kept our consciousness down, convinced us there is no God, and turned us against God upon the arrival and the return of God. While God was away, he plants and seeds all these Petri dishes, and then he comes back around, and he plucks the consciousness from it, empties the Petri dish, and reseeds it again, and then away they go. They're back. It's time to rock the cradle of love. But you don't have to get emptied out with the rest of the Petri dish. That's the good news. If you can come to accept that consciousness takes all forms. And 
whether it's human, reptilian, greys, arcturians, mantis beings, or any other form of creature, there are those who have developed a higher level of consciousness, empathy, courage, compassion, loyalty, principles upon which they base their behavior, and others who base their behavior on lower levels of evolution that appeal to the basic animal instincts, territorial dominance, resource management, hostility and aggression, hierarchical authority and chain of command. Those are all basic animal instincts. The higher levels of consciousness are the real gold and the real resource that is very, really rare. As you can see, look around you. If you are a conscious being, you know it because you look around you and you can see all these other people that are preoccupied by mundane, meaningless stuff. And that is how you know that you are a conscious being who is the gold and the apple of God's eye, the son in whom the Father is well pleased and worthy of being plucked from the tree. And if you ask God to develop a relationship with you, he will ripen the spots that are still a little bit unripe and scrape away the spots that are a little bit rotten. But you can be a fruit that is worthy in God's eyes of harvesting. Now is the time of the harvest. So, farm animal or house pet. But if you want to be a house pet, you have to give up the farm animal lifestyle. Just like, say, a slave plantation where the slaves had gotten so used to their shanty heating up a can of beans on top of a roll of toilet paper like prisoners, okay? Got institutionalized and then they get let out into the real world and they don't know how to make it so they do anything they can to get back into prison as quick as they can. Then they're cooking a warming up a can of beans over a over a over a toilet paper roll that they light from the bottom and use it as a little stove. They don't have freedom in that prison, but they feel comfortable and at home and the routine has become so normalized and ingrained within the fiber of their being, they become institutionalized and even if you let them out into the free world, they do what they can to get back into the prison. As slaves on the plantation, a field N-word or a house N-word, just to be politically correct, is like the same thing. And if you want to go live in the big white house, where all the amenities are, you have to leave behind the shanty in your ways of life that you've gotten so used to here. You can't take the shanty into the big white house or go into the big white house and continue cooking your can of beans over a roll of toilet paper that's burning. You've got to be willing to leave everything you thought, you've thought you always known that you've come to become so accustomed to and the way of life and be willing to leave the rest of the field N-words to go become a house N-word. The rest of the farm animals to go become a house pet. Either way, you're a slave. Either way, you're owned. Either way, God is still God. And to come to this realization and let God take a real form, not some ethereous, nebulous, vaporous, gas cloud concept in your mind, but a real God, is the time that we're at right now. And a lot of people are being contacted. And this realization and this truth is not going to be stopped. It's only going to continue and perpetuate. And the only way you're going to become a house pet, the only way you're going to know the difference between the good ones and the bad ones is to develop that relationship with God through this telepathic communication ability that we all have called the Holy Spirit, that still small voice within, your conscience, the inner knowing between right and wrong, Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder. And the way that you'll know it's God, because God will speak to you. They say, watch out, the devil speaks to you in your own voice. It makes you think it's your own thoughts. So does God. And the way that you'll know that it's not your own thoughts is because it comes through with such fluid fluidity. 
a constant stream of information that doesn't stop. No interruptions, no ups and no lulls where you're sitting there waiting and trying to stumble over your last thought to think of your next one. The consecutive points that are all connected so seamlessly that just keep flowing and flowing. Thoughts that are beyond your own ability to imagine and be creatively thinking with your right brain will just keep on flowing to you. And the way to get that is through your heart. To open up your heart and be in a place of feeling accepting of this God. Asking God to show you the way and being willing to listen after you've asked. I've told people how it happened for me. I won't go over that again right now, but I will be going over some more of these revelations that I receive. And the only videos that I'll be continuing to make are those that may contribute to your willingness and ability to be open-minded enough and courageous enough that it might spark your curiosity in order that you might be willing to open up that rapport and that dialogue with God through your own inner ability to have telepathic communication through the still small voice within that is the Holy Spirit and acknowledge that now is the time and that you are worthy. If a wretch like me is worthy, then so are you. I'm going to include a couple links in the description. One is from a YouTube site called Last Message or Last Messages. It's basically small video clips, 10 to 20, 30 seconds long, of video footage the likes of which MBB333 puts in the slideshow at the end of his YouTubes. Another one's by a girl named Fleur Bruin. And I believe she is a contactee. I believe she believes every word she says. And I don't believe anything she is saying is a false pretense or a show or a put-on. Though she may be mistaken, she ain't lying. She ain't intentionally or willfully deceiving. And she believes every word she says. And she says it with such conviction and a knowing that it seems like she is a contactee quite a while ago. And she has come to a place of acceptance and understanding and further developed her world view from this new position of having been contacted. Because at first it cracks your consciousness, it wipes everything you thought you knew, and you start out as a blank slate. Be like a child in the eyes of God, curious about everything and certain about nothing. And when God cracks you open and wipes your slate clean, that's how you become. But you kind of lose your marbles for a minute. I think this Fleur Brun has stabilized and balanced herself in a position with this new footing of knowing that she's been contacted. And she talks about quite a few different races of beings. And I would say all of which have some that have been selected for the consciousness farm to be house pets that don't get emptied with the Petri dish and that aren't just doomed to be recycled as a farm animal. And she speaks of many of the things that I've spoken of. And so I'll continue watching her videos. But as far as last message, there's plenty of people ringing the alarm bells. I won't be ringing the alarm bell anymore. I'll be de uh, seeking for greater depth and understanding of this developing relationship that I have.